Ladies and gentlemen, I think goes without saying, it is good to be back. I know I haven't been seen on RCCW programming since the last two-match road to we had, where I was obviously attacked by my now confirmed Beach Blast opponent, Lincoln Loud. For those of you who did not see or are in need of a reminder, allow me to make this brief. At Ready for War, it was very well documented I attacked Lincoln Loud after... Nearly a year of poking and prodding. And while some would call my actions justified, I am the owner of RCCW. I am a wrestler, yes. Hell, a, f a current world champion, even. But here at RCCW, I am the one running the show. And that is where I belong. Not in the ring. Not unless I need it. And when it comes to the RCCW World Championship, which many people, after that attack speculated I was going after, even myself, adding fuel to the fire by grabbing the championship. Many people speculated that I would be going after that title at Beach Blast. But, last time I was on screen, I ensured, or at least tried to ensure, that that was not the case. I refused to face Lincoln Light at Beach Blast, opting instead to give him the choice of his opponent for the event. In a sense, I suppose that was my own undoing. I should have known better. He's 12 steps ahead for a reason. I won't lie. I didn't even consider that could have been a possibility. But it was. And unfortunately, I'm a man of my word. So seeing as though he has chosen me as his opponent, I will keep to my word and face him in the main event. But there will be more on that at the end of this video. Because this video is going to primarily focus on the future of not just Beach Blast, but the entirety of RCCW. At the time, it was promoted as merely Beach Blast announcements, but since then, I have decided to add a bit more to it. So without further ado, let's jump right into the announcement. First of all, some last-minute Road to RCCW Beach Blast matches that I have in store for you. Now, these will not be on the final Road to. These will have their own exclusive two-match road to coming up very shortly on the channel. These three individuals came to me and asked that they wanted to defend their championships before Beach Blast. A sort of warm-up, if you will. And I, as always, am always welcoming fighting champions on the show. So, coming up very soon, expect to see legendary and Luan Loud defend their respective championships on the road to Beach Blast. Against who? I guess you'll have to see. Now, let's get to the event itself, RCCW Beach Blast. The card is still under production, but a good maybe 80% of it is complete. The next and final Mega Road 2 will be the deciding factor, will be the finalizer. But I am here today to announce the entirety of the pre-show, which I've been looking to change up a bit for quite some time. So what better time to do that than now, at one of our, if not the biggest show we built up to thus far in our CCW's lifetime. I want to use the pre-show to build to the future, as well as help my friends in and out of the College of Nations show you what they can offer from their league. This pre-show's card is half of each. So we're going to start off with a tag team match. Pinning two teams from two different companies against each other. First up, we will have FXWF's newest tag team in the form of Sun and Neptune of the Junior Detectives take on LWF Reborns, Eddie Dennis, and Mark Andrews of FSU. A team that has made itself well-known in LWF versus a team looking to make itself well-known in FXWF. Not only that, we also have a triple threat match between representatives of ULW, PWA, and IWA. I've approached all three men, Bruno, GM, and Nate respectively, on who they wanted to represent their companies, and each of them have made their choice. For ULW, we have Harp. For PWA, we have Coach, and for IWA, we have Solid Snake. Three names from each of those companies 
looking to make themselves even bigger and to prove themselves worthy of representing their home company. Now we move on to a match that you may have seen before at Ready for War, but something that I'm going to double up on. And it will be the Joker's 24-7 Championship Open Challenge. Anyone from anywhere can accept this challenge. Anyone from anywhere can win the belt, as long as it stays on our CCW territory. That is the rules. And I figure that's how our current champion, the Joker, would want it. Complete and utter chaos. How that goes, we will see. But restoring order, we're going to have another tag team matchup. And this one has been built around some recent events in our CCW. And that being the emergence of Gonta Igarashi and Mercury Black. And apparently, judging by what happened at LWF Reborn's latest event, and the line, Junko Inishima. So, given their actions and considering they're keen to start fighting... I've decided I'm going to book this mishmash duo in a tag team match against the two men they decided to make a name off of in the form of Knuckles the Echidna and Lyred. And finally, a match that's been building for quite some time, but due to circumstances I will not get into, but also with one of the participants recently coming off of a match and an injury with Mandy. Finally, she's all healed up. And she's ready to make her official debut on the main roster of RCCW. We will have Kim Possible taking on Pacifica Northwest. With the winner earning themselves a future opportunity at the RCCW Prestigious Championship. That will be your headlining match for the RCCW Beach Blast pre-show. And concerning RCCW Beach Blast, that is all the announcements I have. However, there are some more announcements that I have. Three major ones, in fact. With the first one being, after much consideration, I have decided to bring back an old show of RCCW. That being RCCW 240 Live, under the brand new name, RCCW 240 Speed Boost. Now, allow me to explain, this will not be a show that has exclusively 240's division on it. The 240 division will still be making appearances on Battleground and Avalanche. But this show, however, is simply to ensure that the 240 division gets much more time to shine. With the recent stellar work of Cat Noir, I felt as though it was only right to bring this show back and allow him the mantle of carrying it on his shoulders. And speaking of that, we will also be including a lot more 240 superstars coming in the new season. Also coming up in the new season will be the return of an old classic tradition of RCCW with our classic tournament. Now this one's going to work a bit differently than it was last time. You remember the GTS and the Superstars vs. Divas classic. The winner would end up employed to RCCW. The second tournament, however, somewhat eh, messed up that concept, admittedly. And because of that, I have decided we're going to change it up just a smidgen. All of the superstars in this tournament are signed officially. They are not fighting for a contract. They have already been signed to RCCW. They are fighting for a chance at a mid-card title of their choice, as well as the right to choose their brand on where they will be going. This is why I have dubbed this tournament the RCCW New Blood Classic, and its participants will be revealed as time goes on during the off-season. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to something not quite as positive, and that is the future of one of RCCW's brands. That being RCCW NXT. It has been silent for quite some time, ever since DC, and I assure you it has nothing to do with what happened to end the show. It has just been that a lot of stress has been put on me, and this has been an especially rough year, so I have made the conscious decision to cancel RCCW NXT. 
Now, this does not mean that it's immediately canceled. No, it is still active. It is still going to produce shows, but it is only going to produce a few more before it wraps up completely. There will be more news on this on the return episode of RCCW NXT. But all you need to know is a majority, not all unfortunately, but a majority of the NXT talent will be called up to the main roster once NXT reaches its series finale. Again, details will be given more on the return episode of NXT. But I feel like for my own well-being, it is best to cut down on a lot of the work and build my way back up to being able to do multiple things at once. Hell, NXT wasn't even really meant to be its own brand. It was meant to be a live stream division, but I guess like my good friend status quo, I got a little too ambitious for my own good. But nonetheless, where mistakes happen, we will use them to learn from. And rest assured, we will ensure that the talent from NXT have a cozy home somewhere, if not on the main roster of RCCW. But before I sign off, I just have one last thing I need to address, and it is the obvious. It's my Beach Blast opponent, the RCCW World Heavyweight Champion, Lincoln Loud. You see, Lincoln Loud, there is so much I could say about you. Genuinely. Genuinely. But I'm not like you in the sense that I need a camera to separate the two of us for me to speak my mind. No, I have the guts to come to you head on and tell you everything I feel about you and then deck you square in the nose. Lincoln, you think that chair shot did anything to me? Lincoln, that chair to my forehead was relief compared to the countless amounts of knives in my back. See, Lincoln, I love virtual wrestling. I love doing RCCW. I love the fans who get my videos to the thousands at some points. The 40-some fans who come to my premieres. The friends I've made and will keep for the rest of my life in virtual wrestling. But there's just something, one thing I hate about virtual wrestling. And it's the fact that we take things and we ram them into the ground. Let me make an example, shall I? Ethan... Carter the third. E C three. One of the biggest names that Impact was able to make from itself. One of the hottest commodities in the entire wrestling world. He had the look, he had the gimmick, he had the character, he had the charisma, he had the name. The name Ethan Carter the third E C three was a unique name. And then he got picked up by the big dub, the FED, the WWE. And what did they do with him? They drained the very love, the very passion, the very charisma, the machismo. They drained it all out of Ethan Carter III. And they kicked him to the curb. They killed Ethan Carter III's passion for wrestling. So much so... And he didn't immediately go back to being EC3, changing the game, EC3, trouble, trouble, trouble. They killed EC3's passion so meticulously, so savagely, that he had to change his narrative. There it is. That right there. That buzz phrase. Because as wrestling fans, we hear a buzz phrase. A pipe bomb. A heist of the century. A dream match, even. All of those phrases are beyond saturated. And what happens when we bring in control your narrative? It gets oversaturated with people using it for the simplest of concepts. Control the narrative. A story about EC3's love, his passion, his heart being crushed to oblivion to the point where he had to recreate, reinvent himself. And people, they lose one little match and they feel like they have to reinvent themselves. They have to control their narrative. But EC3 was just an example of a great artist of our industry being snuffed out by the big fish in the pond. 
People who didn't even know who EC3 was when he came into the WWE suddenly are his biggest supporters, his biggest fans, because he's so revolutionary. He's so inspiring. But people like this don't even understand what it means. People take this and construe the meaning beyond repair. You wanna know how I know? I've talked to these people personally, heard them rant and rave on and on and on and on and on about how they're controlling their narrative when they don't know a lick of how to do it. The results show themselves. Let me tell you what controlling your narrative is. It's taking control of your life! And guess what? That's what I did. I took control of my narrative. My story! That's what a narrative is, people! It's your story! An EC3 story was that people took his narrative and they dug it into the ground! They took it, tried to make it their own, and then abandoned it completely. When it served them no further use. And guess who else has been through that? Me. Your narrative should never come at the expense of someone else's! If anything, my narrative comes because of the people around me. It comes from me lifting them up with me. That's what brings my life joy. That's what gives my life purpose, is the people around me who show compassion for me, who love me, who care about me, even when I was a complete and utter selfish prick, who stood by me through all of it and have lifted me up. The best way I can think to repay them is lift them up with me. Make them feel like they are special because they are the people who watch these shows. The people who have supported me through thick and thin. The fans, my friends, all of them. The people like Noah, people like Status, people like Chard, and Brayden, and GM, and Ben, and Nate, and Rhett, and Bruno, and Moses, and more, and Liam, and Chard. All of those people in the Call of the League of Nations are my magic. Just as the fans like Jacob Baker, like Tristan Valkyrie, like Marcelo Gonzalez, like Rain Allen, like Francisco Jose Alonso, like all the fans watching this right now. You watching this video right now. If you are subscribed, if you're liking, if you're commenting, if you are actively watching RCCW every time you put out a video, you are part of that group. And I thank you, and I love you for that, because without you, I wouldn't be here. I would have left Ka a long, long time ago. Hell, no, no, no. Not even a long, not even that long ago. At the start of the year, I would have left Ka had it not been for you. My friends, my family, my fans, everyone. And the last thing I need is some scumbag like Lincoln Loud trying to prey upon my insecurities. Mirage? He'll get it in a whole other promo. And Revy, I haven't forgot about her either, when she tried to pull an FXWF. But right now, this is about RCCW. This is about Lincoln Loud. And Lincoln Loud, at Beach Blast, your time will come. You can run all you want, but Father Time will catch up. He always catches up. If you thought that was everything I have to say, you're dead wrong. That's only the beginning of the hell I'm gonna rain upon you come that contract signing. Because Lincoln, I know you're gonna have a lot of bullshit to say my way. I know you're gonna have a lot to say about me, but guess what, Lincoln? It's about damn time I fired back, right in your face, point blank. And Lincoln, I had hope that you were prepared mentally for what I'm about to do to you. You won't be able to hide behind a camera, or hide in a boiler room, or hide in the ring. Because if last time you running your mouth to my face showed anything, I will whoop your ass with relative ease. And then come Beach Blast, when it comes to retain that championship, you will be the one who has no such luck.